Hello drummers and other creatures. Let's wrap up this series of paradiddle related videos. I'll, I'll probably come back to the topic at some point, but for now we're gonna take the bass drum and snare drum paradiddle combinations that we did in the last video. So check that one out if you wanna know what the hell I'm talking about. And we're going to see how we can mix and match a little bit, make some interesting patterns out of it, Let's just see what happens. The, the object of the exercise is to spend as much time as you need to be able to, to improvise on the idea a little bit, but let's get stuck in and see how we can create some, some sort of um, combinations. That's the main thing. We had our four paradiddle patterns. We've got the single paradiddle, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And there are three permutations of that, which means it's the same pattern just played starting at a different point. So, the inverted paradiddle, as it's known, is right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. The diddles at the start is right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. And overlapping diddles, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right. But uh, you should know this already. If you don't, uh, you need to check out the other videos because this might be a bit much to deal with if you haven't learned the previous batch of stuff. Okay, let, let's crack on. Let, let's have a quick sip. Ah. Here we go. Need to need a bit of tea to feel fresh. Um, we're going to look first at seeing what we can do to combine that. If you've got four patterns, and we look at the, the first half of every pattern, starting with the bass drum, so you know all the right-handed strokes would be played on the bass drum, right, left, right, right, and then the second half starts with the snare, left, right, left, left, and we can combine uh, each half of each paradiddle. So, for example, if we take the right, left, right, right bit from the single paradiddle, the main thing, and then uh, let's say left, right, right, left from the inverted paradiddle, right? So we've got right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left. And now we're gonna see if we can combine those things uh, into a groove situation, but maybe we'll make it clearer by playing uh, between the bass drum and the snare without the hi-hat interfering in our business. So we've got right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, like so. Okay, now the left of the left, right, right, left is gonna be the accented bit because remember we're counting in sixteenths. So the count that goes with this is one E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. That was wrong, wasn't it? Right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left. Now we'll add the hi-hat in. Now, we can practice playing that, drill it, or however you want to think of that. You, you want to repeat it a lot until you get the hang of uh, playing it comfortably enough that you can speed it up. And as I said in the previous video, you're not necessarily going to play grooves like this very often, but you want to be able to drop it in and out. But let's just see what it sounds like when we've sped it up. strong there but you get the idea now once we've worked on that once we've got everything sitting where we want it to sit we're gonna try and combine it with some other bars of just whatever groove you want to play so if we started with something very simple I'll just play an eighth note rock beat and we'll do one bar of the whatever simple groove and then we're gonna try and combine that paradiddle pattern with that one bar of groove okay here we go something like this You, 
can work on that until you speed it up or just sit and, and go through as many different options as you like. Let's think of another one. Uh, let's go, I don't know, should we start with the right, left, left, right, and then left, left, right, left. So we're going with the inverted paradiddle at the beginning and the diddles at the start. Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. Oh, I keep I keep messing it up, don't I? Um, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. Is that right? Yes. This is why you have to say it aloud to yourself, right? Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. And you start to hear the bass drum a little bit more melodically, uh, which can make it easier to keep track of the groove once you start. Let's put the, um, the hi-hat in there and see if I can get this right. Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. Ooh, wasn't too bad. Let's see if we can then do one bar of any old simple groove and then put this pattern in there. Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. symbols are all reacting to that hopefully they're pleased um, but there you go you, you start to hear the melodic sound that we get from that paradiddle so so we realize that it's a musical thing it's not just a matter of these limbs negotiating with each other uh, and you can the more you can sort of focus on the musical sense of it the more useful this is I guess because when you're conceiving of something musical in your mind um, a paradiddle pattern like this will sort of come up sort of automatically but it'll have a sort of melodic sense to it right and if you don't like it you can change it if you spend enough time doing this so that you you feel really flexible okay where were we so right left left right left left right left let's do it a little bit faster And as you can hear, or maybe you didn't, but I'll point it out now, I had to do a couple of them at that faster tempo just to let myself settle into it. So I, I didn't go away and practice this a million times before doing this video. Um, so there you go, you can see the process, right? If you try and do a pattern like this, you might practice it at slower tempos a million times and then come to play at a faster tempo and you find that you have to go over it again and let yourself warm into it, it's, it's all okay. Next, let's do three bars of whatever not too complicated groove and then we'll add the paradiddle at the end. So you need to kind of keep your attention on being able to remember what pattern we're playing. In this case again, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. And then see if, um, if that all comes out right. Uh, this time maybe we'll do a four bar phrase including a crash.
so on. Not perfect, but it doesn't really matter. It's quite good to have to play by the seat of your pants because this is something you're going to use very often in an improvisational way. And you, you notice that it gives me a little structure for developing a kind of, I don't know, you could call it a, a fill or just a, a nice busy groove variation that can give you a little bit of texture when you feel like you're playing, uh, you know, when you're jamming or you're playing in a song or something like that. Sometimes we want to vary things. It's not quite a fill. We're not coming away from uh, the main pulse on the hi-hat or the ride. Um, we're just bringing in some extra texture. And then these paradiddles are quite useful for getting an introduction to that. Let's try one more combination. Uh, what's the maths here? You've got four patterns. There's got to be four times four. There must be 16 combinations, right? Am I, am I, am I thinking about that right? Uh, maybe I'll write them all out and um, stick them. Oh God, I can't say maybe now, can I? I will write them all out and I'll stick a PDF that you can download uh, from the the, the little information box below and you'll be able to look at all the, the variations of this. Um, so let's think this time of uh, starting with the the left, right? We can, we can reverse the order of the paradiddle. So how about we go left, left, right, left, um, right, left, right, right. Okay, so, so we're, we're basically reversing the sticking. Left, left, right, left, right, left, right, right. Now, um, what's going to happen there is we're going to lose the back beat. But let's see what happens. Maybe I won't think about so much accenting when I'm playing the paradiddle this way around. So, uh, what did I say? Left, left, right, left. Left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right. Okay. There we go. I don't know why I keep holding my stick up in the air like this, it's a bit silly. Super, now let's see if I can put the hi-hat in there and uh, just practice going around that a few times. Wrong one. See, I'm, I'm not taking my own medicine here, am I? Say it out loud, left, left, right, left, right, Left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right. I knew I'd get there in the end. This time, let's put it into a sort of, I don't know, one bar groove and one bar paradiddle thingy bob. Super duper. Three bars, groove this time, and the paradiddle pattern again. Left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right. And on and on. That's the general idea of that. The more you can improvise it, I would, I would think, you know, try and relax with it. And one of the reasons why you'll see I'm sort of trying to find the right pattern after I've said what pattern I'm going to play is that I've got to a point where I'm quite used to improvising with these things. 
And so, uh, you know, trying to deconstruct it down to the sort of a more deliberate set of uh, activities is gets a little bit tricky, right? Once you've got something into the sort of so-called muscle memory or this, this automatic part of the brain, uh, when you then try and bring it up again into your conscious thinking processes, it's not that easy. You need to bring a different type of concentration into it, right? Uh, the end result we're looking for is to then just jam with it. Now, I don't know how much time it's going to take you, but you want to get really, really, really comfortable with these patterns. And then finally try and do, I don't know, like a four bar phrase exercise like that. And then just see how those paradiddles manifest themselves. You know, whether you start with the, um, the left side, you know, whether you play it upside down or whatever, depending on what, what sticking you're using. But if we assume that the default is uh, right hand lead, if you start doing some left hand lead options, um, get comfortable, see what it, it feels like. It's, it's very different when you do a left hand lead option. Uh, it feels more like a fill, more of a departure from your groove. If you're doing uh, the right hand lead stuff, it feels like you could just keep playing it maybe, or you can drop in and out. You don't, you don't have to finish a whole paradiddle pattern. You, you realize you could just interject little snippets of this and it's a nice funky little elaboration of what you're playing. So let's have a little jam on it because this has gone on for long enough. One, two. <laughs> And there you have it, combining the paradiddles between the hand and foot, between the snare drum and the bass drum. And it's super useful. It's where Dave Grohl gets his groove, the very famous groove from uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. There's a load of Mitch Mitchell stuff where he plays that. Um, it's just a brilliant trick to use. So have a go with that. See what comes out and let me know in the comments what you thought of this. If this helped you get somewhere, if you've managed to come up with some creative ideas based on this, or if uh, it's giving you a headache, I don't know. Whichever, I'm interested to hear your feedback. That'll do for now. I think it's time for you to go off and practice.